You're just in time for the last day of October. It's Halloween. And if you didn't know that, you'll probably figure it out in a few hours when your doorbell starts ringing. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is the 31st of October. It is Tuesday. Now, what we're going to do on this show is what we do in all my shows. I'm going to share my due diligence with you. I'm a day trader. I trade penny stocks, stocks under five bucks, which can be found on any market. And while I'm out there, I am keeping my eye open for stocks that have potential to make us money. And then I share them with you. Now, I find these stocks on my trading platform. I spend most of my time looking at scanners and charts. I'm looking for charts that have heat. I want to see volume coming in. I want to see a breakout setup. I want to see some big bounces. Something that makes that chart look like it's ready to run. When I find a chart like that, then I'll take the time to go through the press releases and the filings. Looking for that catalyst. When I find a catalyst, match it to that hot chart. Boom! I've got myself a hot penny stock. And these are the stocks I share with you on this show every day. Well, virtually every day. Well, I got three of those to share with you right now. First stock I have for us is Medicaid Corporation, ticker MCLE. Now, let's start this off by saying this is a ground floor opportunity, if that interests you. Medicaid came onto the market back in June without any business, without any revenues, and the price fell, went real low. Well, that's to be expected. But what's most curious is when you look at their financials, they claim they are not a shell company, which is why it says shell risk over here, because that claims you're in business, but you're not making any money. Well, they're not making any money, but I don't see any business either. Well, they just had news come out a couple days ago. They've chosen a direction. They are going into artificial intelligence. Who isn't, right? But they have AI products that are already out there, and they are targeting the consumers globally. I think it's going to be hot. Why do I say that? Because once the news came out, the chart took off, and it looks like it's got more to give. So Medicaid finished the day at $2.25. She jumped 75 cents today, going up 50%. She's on the pink tier. She is current. She's only got one of those green ticks I tell you to look for, especially with pinks. She's got the transfer agent verified. We don't see a verified profile here. Now, the reason I tell you to look for them, that's validated information, and you get zero validated information with pinks. Not even their financials are validated. That's why they're called disclosures. So I like to see the green ticks over here and at least get some validated information with a pink. Now, if you don't see them, just be cautious. It's not a deal breaker, but be cautious. So what is Matikeo about? Nothing. Not yet. Not until we look at the news. So let's see what we've got going on over here for relative volume. We've got an increase, a nice increase almost 18 times their normal volume. I think something like that going from 14,000 up to 250,000. It's a nice jump. Share structure for Medicaid. Oh my goodness, I was unawares. <laughs> we got ourselves a really nice float, folks. Outstanding share count is already a low float. That is 5.9 million. Insiders have 3.2 million, more than half of them, leaving us only 2.7 million in this float, folks. That's why this thing is ripping so hard. I love that about this. Taking a look at the financials, you're not going to see anything. They're not making any money. Not annually, not quarterly. Now let's take a look at that balance sheet. Startup company. They have nothing in the bank. They have new assets. And they've got $26,000. We got three zeros up here. We got to put on any of these charts. $26,000 in liabilities. It's not a lot of debt. It's a startup company. You got to have some debt. So as I said, this literally is a ground floor opportunity. Checking out the disclosures for the company. We've got two disclosures you want to consider. The most recent financial that came out August 21st. Not really a lot in that. And then this 8K, which came out yesterday. Now, I'm really surprised they have not released this as a news press. And I'm sure if they do, the stock's going to run even more. This came out October 30th. The company reports that it has entered the artificial intelligence space with the purchase and launch of two websites, gptaionlineapps.com and gptaiappsbiz. 
Now I'm going to call one the .com and one .biz so we know the difference. The .com online app site is a platform that allows subscribers to deploy chatbots to help manage customer engagement, lead qualification, and set appointments. Subscribers are also able to use the online apps.com site, the backbone, to integrate the chatbots on a wide range of sites such as Shopify, Squarespace, and WordPress. The .biz site is an AI-assisted content generator, which helps to create unique ideas for content across different platforms such as TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram based on keywords and prompts. The company intends to develop more artificial intelligence powered platforms under the GPT AI branding. So they're going to create a portfolio of AI products and you've already got two. The websites are up. You've got the uh, content creators site, your all in one AI toolkit for content creators. This app is an affordable way for content creators to have generative AI tools that make content swiftly and artistically. Tap into a suite of AI tools for TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and others. The app can brainstorm, write copy, scripts, and more. And they give you the information down here about the benefits of their features and the price. It is $12 a month, $144 a year, or if you pay yearly, it's only $60. Bucks. And the other site is that chatbot site for doing servicing with your customers, setting up appointments, generating leads, things like that. And they plan on doing more. I think it's going to be hot, but who can tell in the AI sector? There are a lot of companies popping up. They are charging for these services, so we're going to have to wait and see their next quarterly report to see what sort of money they're making. But as I said, if they come out with a news press, Based on this filing, that should help this stock to run again. <laughs> Boy, this is a nice chart. Let me show you what I found. So we're going to do our charting now on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. You get this free when you sign up with TD Ameritrade, and that won't cost you a penny either. So we are looking at ticker MCLE Medicale. This is a six-month, four-hour chart, and it is actually their entire chart. They came on the market right here on June 5th at about a buck 80. And from the get go, she started falling. She hit a new low here of a buck 30 and she set a new high, bouncing up to $2. She came back down and then bounced again, hitting that $2. Then she fell, setting a new low of 93 cents and jumped again to that $2 mark. Now that was real short lived. She came back down underneath all of the SMAs and she's fallen down here to a low at the end of September of 40 cents. Now she hasn't been doing much. She's been climbing real slow, working her way up to that nine day SMA. And once she got close, she erupted. This is what I like to call a directional intentional spike. When your price is underneath all the SMAs and then jumps towards a strong SMA, putting a big tall wick through it and then coming back down where she started, that to me is a sign that I want to climb. I'm just looking for an opportunity. And it was only a few days later, she took off. She ripped from 47 cents up to a new all-time high of $2.25. And that's the price right now. She's stuck there. She hasn't even pulled back. She's had lots of volume come in today. All of our SMAs are turning up and riding up, looking good, just like our oscillators. Every single oscillator is pushing to the moon, and our RSI is, whoa, just under 95. It is blazing, folks. 20-day, one-hour view. So there is our directional intentional spike going through the 200, coming back down, laying flat, and then our rip starts. Now, this is most curious. Our rip is starting on the 25th of October. But that filing, which is the only piece of information we have, came out on the 30th. So she is climbing five days before this news comes out. And she has not stopped climbing all of this time. Now, what we've got to watch here, folks, all of our SMAs look great. But there is a big gap between the 20 and the 9, and we have a big gap between the 9 and the price. Think of all of these SMAs and the price being hooked by rubber bands. If any of them get too far from the other, they pull them right back. And if they come back too fast, they can just go further than we anticipated. So there's two things that can happen here. 
The price can keep going sideways, waiting for all of these SMAs to come up and the nine day come up underneath it, put her feet on it and jump again, or she can fall back to it. She could fall through it as well. Ideally, we would like to see her go sideways until this nine day SMA on the one hour chart catches up to her and then hope she pushes off. Oscillators show a lot of strength here, but they are planing out just right now, but everything still looks hot. And our, oh my God, the RSI is up at 98.7. My goodness, does hell get that hot? Five day, five minute. Look at that chart, folks. That is beautiful. She was down here at 98 cents and is just nice and evenly pulled on up. She's been going sideways right? Waiting for this nine day SMA. And it has come into the picture. There's no doubt about that. And you can see it is on an uptrend, the nine day, the 20 day. And here comes our 50 day SMA into the picture. You know what I think is going to happen? <laughs> I'm thinking the price could come down to this new SMA. That's what you see happen. A new SMA comes on the board. Doesn't matter if it's above the price or below it. The price normally goes to it. And it hasn't been here very long. So I wouldn't be surprised if she dips down to the 50 day, but I'm expecting this to jump some more. So if it hits the 50, I think it's just going to push off of that as well. Now I would tell you to do some more due diligence. Well, you can try, but there's not a lot out there. So go ahead and put MCLE on your watch list. This new AI company looks hot. She could give us some more gains. Now here's a sector we haven't looked at in a while, the cannabis sector. And I love cannabis. No, not the sector, cannabis itself. <laughs> but you already knew that. So we are looking at Verano Holdings, ticker VRNOF. Now her chart, it was hot. A month ago, a lot of cannabis companies were hot. That's when the news came out from the Health and Human Services asking the DEA to reschedule cannabis. A bunch of cannabis companies took off, including this one. She ran for about 10 or 11 days, going from 250 up to 555. You're talking over 100% gains. Then she started to fall, as most of the cannabis companies did. I think they were tired of waiting on the DEA. Well, there's no timeline. There's no deadline. We don't know when or if the DEA is going to make that decision. So prices started coming down, as you would expect. But then all of a sudden, there was an abrupt drop in the market. In the sector of cannabis, uh, Cresco Labs, Verano Holdings took a huge drop. And that's why we're looking at it, because it is now a buying opportunity. You're looking at a company that's doing virtually a billion dollars a year in business. So Verano Holdings finished the day at $3.38 with about 11% gains. She's on the best tier of the OTC, the QX the most transparent, the most trustworthy. They give us so much information they could easily be on the major exchange if they chose to. This one can't go to the major exchange because here in America, as long as marijuana is still not legal, if you touch the plant, you're not allowed to have your company on the major exchange. This is as high as she can go. We have a verified profile and a transfer agent looking great, independent directors, you only list these here when you have aspirations of uplisting. Yeah, she wants to uplist. She's waiting for laws to change. And she is penny stock exempt, which means she's been in business for three to five years, had millions of dollars in assets or revenues during that time, and they have kept up with their filings. In other words, they're showing us they're responsible. They're working. They're making money. They're getting their filings in on time. Everything looks good with this company. So let's get some information here about Verano Holdings. Verano Holdings is one of the U.S. cannabis industry's leading companies based on historical revenue, geographical scope, and brand performance. They are a vertically integrated multi-state operator. Since cannabis is still illegal, it can't cross borders, even interstate, they have to build a separate business in every single state, separate facilities. Imagine if Coca-Cola had to put up a factory in every state that they operated in. Verano offers a superior cannabis shopping experience in medical and adult use markets under the Zen Leaf and Move dispensary banners and produces a comprehensive suite of high quality regulated cannabis products sold under their diverse portfolio. 
Verano, Move, Savi, Bits, Encore, and Avexia. Verano's active operations span 13 states, comprised of 14 production facilities with over 1 million square feet of greenhouse capacity to grow their own marijuana. That's what being vertically integrated means. It means you take care of every single stage of your business. They plant the seeds, they harvest the crop, they process it, they package it, they ship it, they sell it. They take care of everything. Right now, they are in 13 states with about 135 dispensaries. And when laws change, I guarantee you, they will narrow those facilities down to just a few in the country. So what was the relative volume around Verano today? A little less than normal. She's been doing about 370,000 shares a day. Today, she did 317,000. Share structure for Verano. Outstanding share count, 343 million. The insiders own about 13 million of them. That leaves us with a whopping 330 million shares. We have seen worse. Market cap for the company is just over 1 billion for the market cap. Financials for Verano. Ah, don't do this. Hit it again. <laughs> there we go. So back in 2019, she was only doing 65, 66 million dollars. Don't forget, we got three zeros up there. She then jumped up to 228 million in one year. Then the next year, she was at 737 million dollars of cannabis being sold. And at the end of 2022, she was at $879 million, just under a billion dollars. And they got to keep $423 million of that. Quarterly, well, they're doing roughly a quarter billion dollars every quarter, bringing home over $100 million every quarter. Looking really good, folks. Balance sheet, they've got money in the bank. They've got about $102 million. They've got about $144 million of cannabis in the back room and inventory. Total assets. Look at that, folks. $2.3 billion in assets. Liabilities, $1 billion. Total liabilities and stockholders' equity. Right there, folks. $2.3 billion stockholder equity. That is our shareholder equity. This is looking really, really good. Let's take a look at those disclosures. Oh yeah, we got a lot of disclosures here because we got a lot of news and we're gonna take a look at that. We've also got a new investor here. Let's see, how much did this person get? This is George Arcos. He got himself 51 million shares. He now owns just about 15% of the company. Now let's take a look at that news since that's what most of these 8Ks are attached to. I have gone back here to October 12th. Verano expands retail footprint in Connecticut with the opening of Zen Leaf Newton, the company's second social equity joint venture location in Connecticut and fourth dispensary statewide. They now have listed their stock on the Canadian market, the CBOE. This is interesting. A new bill to federally legalize marijuana was filed in the House on the 25th. I did not hear about that. I need to follow up on that piece of information. Lawsuit seeks the equal treatment for cannabis businesses. And this is what I want to share with you folks. This is the biggest piece of news we got going right here. Lawsuit seeks equal treatment for cannabis business. Federal criminalization of safe, Regulated intrastate cannabis legal in 38 states is unconstitutional and unfair to small businesses. Cannabis businesses are unconstitutionally prevented from getting small business loans, investments, unable to have normal banking relations, and are subject to discriminatory tax laws. They get no tax deductions at all. Imagine paying taxes on a billion dollars worth of revenue and you get no deductions. A coalition of United States cannabis operators and investors working in state legal medical and adult use cannabis markets today filed a lawsuit against the United States Attorney General Merrick Garland. 
The coalition seeks to enjoin the federal government from enforcing the Controlled Substance Act in a manner that interferes with the interstate cultivation, manufacturing, possession, and distribution of cannabis pursuant to state law. The lawsuit asserts that the federal government has no basis for enforcing the Controlled Substance Act against intrastate state-regulated cannabis operations. The lawsuit is in the United States District Court for the District of Massachusetts, and it has been filed on behalf of Canna Provisions and Wise Acre Farms. These are private companies. Then you have a few public companies, Verano Holdings, Ascend Wellness, Terrasend and Green Thumb Industries, along with investment companies, Eminence Capital, and Poseidon Investment Management. And as I said, they now have 135 locations nationwide, and they got 72 of them in Florida. Florida is a huge state for cannabis. So as you can see, folks, they have no problems. Business is growing. They're adding dispensaries out there. They're making more money. They have no problems except for the law. That's the only problem. And still the price fell hard. It is a buying opportunity. We're taking a look now at Verano Holdings, ticker VRNOF. That is a six-month, four-hour view. So we've got a low here. This hit us at the end of August of $2.53, just before the news came out about the DEA being requested to reschedule cannabis. And that is when she had her run, hitting a high of $5.50. Now you can see right here, she has been breaking through the 200 a few times. Well, I've put a support resistance line here, which is where she fell. This was the normal fall with people getting impatient waiting. This is the fall I can't explain. And this isn't the only company it's happened to. It's happened to a lot of cannabis companies. And she fell way below this support. And right now she is starting to come back over it. And that is the only sign of strength we've got. She is still under the nine-day SMA. No volume to talk about. So right now it doesn't look like she's ready to run and take off. But she's at a good recovery point. This would be a good time to buy some of this stock because she is so low. Now, it looks like she is ready to recover. Look at our PPO, my percentage price oscillator, and my ADX, which I like to call trend continuation. You get a straight line whenever the trend is going one direction. When the line changes direction, your trend changes. Take a look. See, we were falling, falling, falling as this was going up. doesn't matter what direction this is going. Just, is that a straight line? As soon as the line changed direction, she changed trend. Well, here's what we're looking at. My PPO is coming down. My ADX is coming up. Whenever you see those two coming together, guaranteed your price is falling. When they get real close, you start going flat. And as soon as they start to pull away like that, you have a price that is climbing. This is setting up for a recovery right now. That hourglass tells me she's coming together and she's about ready to go out. Our MACD is showing recovery as well. She did dip down deep, but you can see she's had a bend here and she's now starting to come up. And her RSI is low. She was in the basement, clear down there at 20, and she is at a very chilly 35 right now. Taking a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. So she was up here near the 200 and then fell away abruptly down to that support, crushing it, hitting a low of $3 here and bouncing up. She's gotten on top of this support and on top of our 20-day SMA and our 9-day just crossed to 20. Now we're starting to see some strength. Even though these bigger SMAs are above her, they are showing signs of calming down. They're not falling straight down. They're lessening their decline. <laughs> there you go. Perfect example, folks. See the hourglass there? As this fish mouth opens up, your price starts to climb. This is looking outstanding. Our MACD is now bouncing back. Lots of green bars pushing towards that signal line. And our RSI is warming up. It's up to 50. I would like to see it at 55. Taking a look at our five-day, five-minute. So we've got a high here of $4.27, just under the 200. Fell down to that low of $3. She was underneath everything. Jumped above everything. 
hasn't even retapped the 200, which is kind of surprising. Normally, the first time you come through, you come back and hit it once or twice. She hasn't done that. She is now bouncing off of her 200-day haul, not the 200-day SMA. The 200-day haul is a lot like your 200-day SMA. It takes 200 days of prices and averages them all together, but then it gives more credence to current prices. So you end up with a line that's a little different than the SMA. And here recently, our penny stocks have been paying a lot of heed to it. You can see right there, that was a solid bounce off of the 200, not the 50, the 200. And she is climbing right now. Our oscillators, our PPO was coming down, but it's changed its mind. It is now starting to climb. Our MACD is about ready to do a crossover as well. And our RSI, whew, has finally reached 55. And you can see our 200-day SMA is level, level right now. Now is when we expect it to start turning up, bringing some extra heat and lift to the price. I would keep my eye on v VRNOF, but I would also consider getting a position right now before she starts to climb. This is a big company. She's not going to go anywhere, folks. She's going to be here for the long haul. Our next company is actually in two sectors, the AI and the medical sector, which is going to make it real fun to explain to you. This is Immunoprecise Antibodies, ticker IPA. No, that's not a beer. <laughs> Her chart is wonderful. It is the kind of chart we're always looking for. It's an atypical breakout chart in the midst of breaking out right now. They just came out with big news about how they're incorporating AI with their medical technology, which I really can't explain. So I'm going to bounce around to explain that to you when we look at what the company does. So IPA, she finished today at $2.30 with almost 20% gains. She is a penny stock on the major exchange, the NASDAQ. So you're going to be able to trade this for free and you can trade it pre-market, after-market as well. You can't do that with OTC stocks. So what is this company about? All right, I'm going to do my best here. Immunoprecise Antibodies operates in Victoria, Canada, Utrecht, Austria, the Netherlands, and Fargo, North Dakota. IPA is a preeminent supplier of custom antibodies to the global research industry and the industrial community. Biotechnology research involves a vast amount of complex information that spans different dimensions, such as the functions of proteins, the 3D structures of molecules, and the genetic information encoded on DNA. Understanding these various dimensions is essential for comprehending biological systems and making meaningful predictions and insights. However, there is a significant challenge in integrating, analyzing, and utilizing the diverse data as it comes from different sources and is stored in various formats. This challenge is known as the information integration dilemma. And the way to solve that dilemma? Use AI. AI algorithms have the ability to process and analyze vast amounts of medical data, such as genetic information and DNA markers. With this technology, healthcare professionals can make more accurate and tailored treatment decisions based on individual unique needs, improving overall patient outcomes. AI-powered systems can detect patterns, predict possible health issues, and provide real-time monitoring, enabling early intervention and preventive measures. Now they say this market, which is relatively new, right, AI and medical, is estimated to be valued at about $21 billion this year. And by 2030, they expect it to be up to nearly $188 billion. That is nine times growth in the next six years. And that's just a guesstimate. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, let's get over to the right page. Oh, that's nice. We've got at least 900% increase in volume. Though they're small numbers, she jumped from 57,000 shares a day over the last month to over 500,000 shares today. I know they're small numbers, but that's a lot of extra attention being shown to the company today. Share structure for IPA. The only thing they tell us is the outstanding share count, about 25 million. Our float isn't going to be any higher than that, and that's not a bad float if that's what it was. But floats are normally lower than the outstanding share count, so it's going to be better. 
Market cap, we are at about 48.3 million. Financials for the company. She's growing little by little. 2020, she was at 10 million. Year later, 14 and a half, then 15.1. Now we're at 15.2. And she's making good profit. Quarterly, we don't get any information there. I guess that's because she's a NASDAQ. Let's take a look at that balance sheet. All right, cash in the bank. We have just a little over $6 million. Add up all their assets together. They have a total of $57 million. Add up all their liabilities and debt, about $15 billion. Million. <laughs> Not billion, million. Which actually leaves us, stockholders' equity, positive. $57 million. This is looking good. Looking at the disclosures. Oh, we got a slew of 6Ks over here. Each 6K was co is correlating to a piece of news. So let's just jump on over to that news. So we're not going to go through all this news, and some of it we've already poked our head into, but there are a couple of other pieces here that I want to share pieces with you for. This one here, IPA provides update on growth strategy and recent share price movement. IPA's first quarter for fiscal year 2024 which ended July 31st, 2023, reported a record 21.3% increase in revenue and also witnessed IPA's protein manufacturing facility expanding their capabilities, marking an impressive 44% growth year over year. However, IPA does not believe the recent drop in stock price matches the value creation in its building with its growth strategy. He's not happy with the price either. He knows that they are worth more than the price is right now. Another piece of information. BioStrand unveils groundbreaking retrieval augmented generation based LLM platform integrated patented Hyft technology. Right? You have no idea what I just read. And I don't either. This is very hard to explain. They have two different types of technology platforms that are very technical. They have the Lens AI and the HYFT. Hift, Hyft. They have brought both of their technologies under the AI, so now it is using it. This pioneering platform seamlessly integrates the company's patent HYFT technology and Lens AI platform signifying a noteworthy leap in the market as the company aims at ensuring unparalleled accuracy, interpretability, and data-centric design in generative AI tools. BioStrand's innovative approach to solving the information integration dilemma has led to the development of a unique technology design that encapsulates and unifies diverse data mod mod <laughs> information. <laughs> I hate it when I get stuck on a word. So that's what we got going on here, folks. They've brought AI in with all this diverse data that lots of medical places have, but they can't correlate together because it's in different formats, different places. Now they're going to be able to use AI to bring it all together and come up with answers that is going to help everybody. And the chart, it is breaking out right now. Everything on this chart is on fire. This is Immunoprecise Antibodies, ticker IPA. This is a six-month, four-hour view. Six months ago, we've got a high of $4.45, way underneath the 200. Tapped it a few times on our way down, but not showing any intention of breaking out. Hit a low down here of $1.14. She did that on October 23rd. And off of this low bubble, she has changed her trend. She was coming down for a very long time. She was underneath every SMA, has crossed the 20, the 200 haul, the 50, and just kept going. No turnaround, no bouncing, just climbing, climbing, climbing. One little red bar here in the aftermarket, pre-market hours. She has gotten all the way through the 200 with that directional intentional spike. Came down no lower than she started and just kept going. Right now we are at $2.30, which puts us well over the 200. Our nine-day SMA is just about ready to cross it. And our other SMAs have all turned and are pointing up. Speaking about pointing up, every single oscillator is going to the moon. Our RSI is on fire right now at 71.1. 20-day, one-hour look. 
there's the end of your downtrend right there big pop of volume there that was a token sign i am changing trend that really is a directional intentional spike there she came back down bounced off her 200 haul got over the 50 and started climbing on her nine day escalator and she's rolling around but she isn't even close to the 20 and it looks like she's ready to take off again she hit a high today of two dollars and 57 cents fell back to two dollars and 30 cents and looks like we could be at 232 right now volume was slowly increasing here over the last few days but really popped today and look at those smas folks those are perfectly set up our oscillators look great. We do have bounces going on, but she's bouncing uphill. We don't mind that at all. Our MACD's doing the same thing, but her bounces are going under the line. Those are a little more scary. Our RSI's doing the same thing, and she is bouncing in and out of the fire. We're loving it. Coming down to our five-day, five-minute view, that's a beautiful chart. Low bubble in this corner, high bubble in that corner. Going from a buck seventeen to two dollars and fifty seven cents over the last five days she was under the 200 she slowly crept over it once she got on top that was it she didn't peek back she started climbing she is really hugging around her 50-day sma she's floating on her nine day but when she comes back down it's the 50-day that holds her up and pushes her back she did have a big drop here but it looks like we got a rubber ball bounce what I mean is the ball goes under the water and it comes right back up. I didn't mean to go that deep. Whoop, and she's right back up. She's over her 50, just underneath our 200 hull. This looks like it wants to climb. Looking at our oscillators, we just had a turnaround on our PPO. Same thing with our MACD. And we just had a big jump on our RSI. It was clear down here at 35 and she jumped all the way up to 61. I'm like an IPA. Medical and AI is a big win for everybody. I don't see how that's ever going to harm anyone unless they start making more vaccines. I don't want no vaccines made by an AI. But I will take your advice. IPA, folks, it needs some more due diligence. I swear there was a lot of information there, but maybe reading it would just confuse you. However, things do look good. And I like the other two stocks too. You're not going to get a whole lot of information out of the first one, but the second one you'll get more. And it is worthy to do more due diligence considering it's your money you're investing, right? So the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.